Mr. Beast is living proof that YouTube has grown out of its awkward teen phase and into its full-grown media conglomerate taking over phase. Cute, right? To say that Mr. Beast is the king of YouTube.net is clearly an understatement. As Eminem would put it, why be a king when you can be a god? And he clearly is as he continues to get W after W in every sector that he dips his scraggly little beard into. But when you have someone as successful as the Beast Man, it leaves people asking, how do I do that too? Well, it turns out many people ask that and they answered it by doing the exact same thing. I've heard this phenomenon called a few things, including the Mr. Beastification of YouTube, the commodification of Mr. Beast or some other ification apparently. If you want to hear more about the larger implications that the mere presence Dr. Beast has on YouTube, I'll link those two videos by Mia Cole and Pinley in the description. But I'm not here to talk about that. This is my own thing. It's more about how we got here. And should you pull a Papa Beast and sell your soul to the YouTube algorithm? Let's talk about it. Also, I'm looking at my analytics and I'm not going to name names, but apparently only one person watching this isn't subscribed. So if that's you, you should probably click that red button. When I say sell your soul, I don't mean literally visiting YouTube headquarters and pledging your undying allegiance to Susan Widget's Wid Widget Kick Widget Susan. But if there is an option, honestly, sign me up. What I'm talking about is Father Jimmy's personality as a whole. When he puts out a new video, his main goal is to maximize two things, audience retention and click-through rate, which means creating a title and thumbnail that'll get you to click on the video and then shoveling insane content into your face so you stay on that video as long as possible. Which reminds me, Ale Alexa, light's red. The light's changed. Something's different. What color's gonna be next? You have to stay on the video to find out. But these aren't crazy new concepts. We've known that these are desirable metrics for a long time. However, should you remove your entire personality for the sake of the YouTube algorithm? Enter the difference between old YouTube and new YouTube. By old YouTube, I don't mean the ancient times of Fred Smosh and the Annoying Orange. If anyone even knows what I'm talking about when I say those names. What is Fred even up to? Apparently his real name's Lucas, and he has a different YouTube channel? That should be its own video. Stay tuned. Anyway, I'm referring to about four to six years ago. Specifically, Vine YouTubers. The one I'll be talking about most is Cody Ko, just because I've followed him the longest. This is your Liza Koshi, Drew Good, and Danny Gonzalez, even Jenna Marbles, etc. The key to growing a big channel in this era wasn't to do crazy stunts and spend shitloads of money. When looking at the most popular videos on all these channels, the titles are pretty basic, and although the thumbnails are kinda over the top, they aren't them half dying or cosplaying as someone who just took cocaine for the first time. When looking at the editing, it's not as fast paced and honestly feels kind of slow compared to the popular videos of today, including mine. There can be no dead space. Alexa, lights purple. I have to be entertaining every second or you'll click off and I'll starve and die. What I'm making is that Vine YouTubers relied a lot more on their personality to develop a relationship with their viewers. People wanted to see vlogs and days in the life of people because it was less topic slash content focused and more person focused. Of course, everyone has a bit of a persona when they're on camera versus when they're not. I'm not saying these are 100% genuine people, except me, I'm 100% genuine and we're best friends, obviously. But in their content, they themselves are the focus. Whether it be the jokes themselves or trying to be relatable showing off their lives, it's the viewer connecting to that persona, not the crazy thing that they're doing. That's also why a lot of people did reaction content during this time. Now, I'm not advocating for creating this type of content today. People aren't going to stick around for your video if it's too slow. Also, the more personality focused your content is, the more people are going to want to pick it apart and then it'll limit your audience. Enter Jimmy Beast and the new YouTube. I could also refer to this as TikTok YouTube. Not specifically because it's full of TikTokers. No, that's also true, including me. Please subscribe so I can leave that god-awful platform. Talking about the way that TikTok has changed the way that people view YouTube videos. Oh, you have an intro? I don't care. You want to give a backstory before jumping into the main topic of your video? I'm already watching something else. Fuck off. People can now watch 100 videos on 100 different accounts in under a minute, and it's constantly changing topics and interests. One second, you're watching an inspiring story of somebody going through the lowest point of their life and then making it out, and the next is Family Guy clips over a mobile game. Nice. This is exactly what Rabbi Jimmy caught on to. There have to be multiple plots intersecting and different characters coming in and out and constant scene changes and giving away tens of thousands of dollars and oh who the fuck even is Mr. Beast? Since he's trying to maximize retention and be likable to literally the entire world, there's no room for him to be an actual person. Even the videos where he tries to, like the one where he doesn't eat for 30 days. Most of it still comes across as heavily scripted and fake. That's probably why he surrounds himself with a team of people that are constantly over the top so that he doesn't have to. And it's the same with all the other TikTok YouTubers. Most of the time they feel like at best a TV game show host. And even then, Steve Harvey has more charisma than they do. But it doesn't matter, right? It's obviously working. These are some of the biggest channels on the platform and they're getting tens of millions of views every day. And to that, I say no shit if i could rebuild willy wonka's chocolate factory then cook dinner with gordon ramsay you bet your barbecue covered titties i would do it but since most of us don't have the money or influence to do that we shouldn't pull a full mr beast before they were able to do all these insane challenges and give away so much money they relied on having an actual personality to build an audience looking back at the old videos of tiktok youtubers they weren't the insanely fast-paced clearly scripted and overproduced shitstorms that they are today i know what you're thinking shane if both tiktok youtube and vine youtube are both bad what is good? What do we do? That is a great question, my child. Allow me to introduce people who I think have found the perfect balance.
balance between fitting into the current state of YouTube and still having a soul. My favorite example is Ryan Trahan. Although a lot of his videos are challenge based and created in a similar format as Beastie Boy, he still manages to incorporate his persona. He doesn't cut out his morning routine or him saying how he's feeling. When he's talking to the audience, he's not screaming at the camera. And even if it is scripted, it still feels like we're going on the journey with the person that he's showing us. We care about what he's doing, not only because the thing itself is crazy, but it's him doing it. Another great example of this that I like is Ludwig. His story is a bit different because he's a streamer, so he built a community before that. But the idea is that he can still do interesting things with his content and include the Ludwig personality. So be interesting, have good quick edits, and still think about keeping your audience retention. But coming from someone who has just thought about the algorithm before, don't cut out your persona, whatever it is, don't cut it out. In a time when all the most successful YouTubers feel like any other giant soulless media conglomerate, know that you have one and I promise that you'll feel better about your content and so will your viewers. And if you've made it this far, wow, we're basically best friends now. Was it the lights? It must have been the lights. You have to subscribe because you're invested. Anyway, bye. Bye.